My name is Julia Silgi, and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. And in this video today, we are going to use this week's Tidy Tuesday data about um, beer production. And we are going to use, uh, we're going to show how to use resampling to, um, to uh, make robust uh, estimations of quantities that we're interested in. This other, specifically in this data that, um, set, there's information on um, the materials used to brew beer. And we are going to um, look at the relationship between how much uh, malt beer producers use and how much sugar beer producers use and we're going to look at the relationship between that and use bootstrap resampling to um, estimate that in a robust way. So this is a great video if you are want to understand better about what bootstrap resampling is and how it can be used um, less in a predictive um, context and more in an inferential kind of, um, kind of context. So let's get started. So um, we have this data that is about um, beer production. Let's call this some um, brewing materials raw as we get started. And let's look at what we have here. So brewing materials raw. So um, we, uh, in this video, we're gonna use this data um, about uh, the materials that are used to brew beer. And we are going to, um, uh, instead of doing like a predictive model, we are going to instead use this data to understand something about um, the relationship of the stuff in here. So this is um, this is gonna be a little bit of a different video. Um, it's a great video for getting started with understanding resampling methods. Um, and resampling methods are important all across statistics and machine learning. So um, I think this will be interesting to look at. So let's look at, um, let's look at the type um, that we have there. So there are um, there are an even number of rows of all these things, and we have things from hops to barley and rice. But let's see, um, let's see for each of these months. Here, this column is measured in barrels, barrels of whatever these things are. And let's see what what do we have in here? What is used the most? So these are totals, and then the thing that is the, used the most is malt. So malt is um, used in, I think, almost all beers. I mean, not in gluten-free beer, but in basically, I mean, maybe there are some beers that are not made with malt, but I'm gonna say that. Uh, um, almost all, you know, it's very common, obviously, it's one of the biggest uh, uh, components here of the, the brewing materials. And then the next highest one is sugar and syrup. So uh, sugar and syrup is also used a lot in making um, beer. So let, what we want to do here is we want to use this data set and let's answer the question, um, how much sugar do beer producers need per barrel of malt? So how much, how many, how much of a barrel of sugar do, do um, beer producers need to for every barrel of malt that they use? And this is going to be, um, you know, for in this whole data set, which is a, which is over many um, months and years. Like how much, g given that we. Um, you know, they like. I'm sure every beer producer has this, you know, like their own recipe, and um, gets uses different amounts of these different things, right? Like um, um, hops and everything. But we can use the um, data about the usage, the brewing materials use, to understand overall um, an estimate of how much uh, sugar uh, beer producers use per. Um, barrel of malt. So let us, um, so we've got this brewing materials raw here and let's start getting this ready. So let's, um, first let's, uh, let's first, um, just take a look at, so we have, let's put on the X axis. Let's put, let's, let's, we've got year and month um, uh, separated out here. So let's make a date column. And um, I'm gonna do this in two steps. First, I'm gonna paste together year with a dash 
and month, and then dash um, O1, like that. And then that will give me um, a new column called date right here, which is a character. And then let me, in the next step, let me say date equals lubridate year month day date. So now this should be a, now it's a date here. So now, so it, now it's like the first of the month for each of these things that I have here. And let us put um, date on the x-axis and let's put the number of barrels, which is this month current value on the y-axis. And let's, let's, um, let's try some points here. Like so. So let us do a little bit of filtering here. So let's filter so that the type, let's look at a couple of things here. Let's look at, um, let's look at the malt and malt products. Let's look at the um, sugar and sugar syrups. And let's, uh, I don't know, let, whoops. Let's look at, I don't know, hops, which one? So dry hops are used more than the extract here. And then um, let's make color equals type, like that. And so this should give us a, um, uh, okay. Okay, nice, all right. So this is helpful. This is helpful. So we see the malt and malt products going up and down over time, over the course of a year, I guess. They make a lot in the summer and less in the winter, summer, winter, summer, winter. Um, we see the sugar, the sugar is going up and down the same amount Oh, I'm, I might be wrong about malt being used in like all beer because it looks like it's kind of trending down a bit over time. People must be using other things besides malt. Um, sugar doesn't look like it's trending down so much, but we'll be able to get an estimate here. And there's something weird that's going on past 2016. Um, it looks like the data is being um, uh, counted in a different way and or... Um, Something different is going on there. So let's say year is less than 2016. And let's take a look there. And then the other really weird thing that's happening is on in these December months, the like hops, I think, I think an error has been made in some of these Dece December months, like hops cannot be that <laughs> you can't use that much hops to make beer um, and it doesn't really make sense that malt and sugar are that low so I believe those months to be in error um, I could take out I could take out uh, let me ch let's let's do this say let's say month is not equal to 12 that would take out all the December's um, um, month uh, and uh, what year is this? Year is not equal to um, 2000, not, let's see, let's say in, let's say in, and not in um, here, and let's say 2014 to 20, 2014 to 2015, like so. And let's see if that get, did I do that correctly? Yeah, okay. So we got rid of those points that pretty significantly to me look like they were an error. Wait, did I get rid of all the Decembers? I think I did. Um, month, comma, month and not and year. Does this do it? No, gosh, okay. No, it's like this. Well, okay, so in it, um, in the interest of time, let's just take out not month and not and not in, let's say, let's do it like this. And year in 2014 to 20, wait, I think we had 2008, 8 to 2014, like so. Wait, 
Whoops, a daisy. So now I go back to the 20, um, 18, and I think I needed the double ands there. And year in 2018, 2014. Oh gosh, all right. Uh, rather than boring everyone with me hassling with that, which of course is something that can be solved, we're just gonna take out the Decembers um, here and keep going on. All right, so these are the, so we've got hops down there. Um, the sugar, which we do see like seems to go up and down, but not as dramatically as the malt, like so. Um, so that's a little bit of a, exploratory graph that we have here um next uh let so let's let's see so let's take this so this is going to be our um brewing um filtered like this and we will go like so great and let's take this filtered data set and let's reshape it so um, let's take the date column that we made, the type and the month current here. So this is, um, uh, and we actually don't, yeah, okay, this is fine. So the, the date, type, and month current, so this is barrels of that material that is used, like so. And let us now, um, we're gonna reshape this so that it is pivot wider. So we're gonna say names, names from so the names come from the type column and the values come from the month current column month current like this and so now we have for every month what is the malt the sugar and the hops like so and we can uh, let's let's clean up those names clean names like that all right, great. So let's call this brewing materials. Brewing materials, like so. All right, um, and let's, um, okay, so brewing materials. Let's see what, for example, what is the relationship between the malt and malt products and the sugar and syrups? And let's, um, let's put some points on there, like so see what that looks like and we see a um, we see you know kind of a kind of a you know that's that's tipped upward um, but um, it is certainly not a tight correlation but it does we do see that like on months when um, brew breweries or beer producers are using more malt they're using more sugar and um, when they're using less malt, they're using less sugar. So let's put a um, let's put a uh, let's put a line on there. Let's just put a straight line because I that that doesn't look like um, that doesn't look um, like I would want to you know learn anything beyond a straight line from that probably um even if that so we've got this here where you know and this this is a this is a um fit line through this and we can um uh, you know and this is representative of a model that um uh, we can go through and fit here in a minute um uh but the, th this kind of model that we have here is is based on a lot of assumptions and um a lot of statistical assumptions that may not actually hold when we in this real data that we have and so what we're gonna do is we're going to show how to use um, uh, a, how to use uh, resampling a resampling approach to get a better estimate so before we do that let's um, let's let's just fit a simple a simple straightforward model using like using our modeling fundamentals in R so let's say we're gonna fit a, a linear model just using uh, ordinary least squares and let's say that the sugar the sugar and syrups how much sugar and syrups do we use um, for every 
barrel of malt. I'm going to put a zero here in the um, for the slope, meaning saying I don't want to fit a slope um, because I um, I'm going to uh, tell I'm going to like uh, fit this model, assuming that um, with the assumption that when a um, when a beer producer in some month, if there was no beer, if there was no um, uh, it, like we, we, we don't need sugar if there's no malt like uh, if there's no if there's no malt being made being used to make beer then we are not going to need any sugar because the malt is the big um, the big uh, uh, the bulk of is what most of the beer is made of so we would put um, data is our brewing materials here and let's call this um, beer fit like so and let's fit this so we can do summary, beer fit, and get see what our results are. So here's here's our estimate um, and and some standard errors on the estimate for. So what this is is how much of a barrel of um, of uh, sugar or and syrups does a beer producer need for every barrel of malt that they have? So that's what we're um, that's what we're estimating here. Us, and we can also uh, load um, broom. I'll just load tidy models here because I'm going to use our sample as well. So if we load tidy models, and we can we can also tidy that fit, that beer fit, beer fit, and get this information out in a nice data frame that I can I can keep and save and get at these results here that I want to. So this would be a um, um, this would be be a uh, if we wanted to fit it one time to the whole data set uh, using the fairly, you know, strong assumptions that go into ordinary um, uh, least squares. But that's not what we're going to do. That's not what we're going to do here. So in, in this video, instead, we're going to show how can I get an e like, how can I get this estimate? And how can I get some kind of confidence interval on that estimate instead of just fitting one time, but instead using bootstrap resampling. So uh, we're going to use a function from our sample called bootstraps. So um, a bootstrap resample is we have all of these, um, all of this data about um, beer production, um, and we, uh, we a bootstrap resample is when we take that data set and I draw randomly from that data set um, with replacement, so that the 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 bootstrap resample is the same size as the original re uh, the original data set, but it has um, uh, duplicates in it. Uh, um, and um, and so that it's like a, a new created newly created data set so I do it I don't do it one time I do it many 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 times and we can use these to understand the characteristics of our relationships better so we're gonna use the bootstrap the bootstraps uh, function from our sample and we're gonna put brewing materials in and we're gonna make a lot we're gonna make a lot of them. So we are gonna say, um, let's let's make a thousand of them, a thousand resamples, and um, we're gonna use um, a function. Uh, um, we're gonna use a function here, apparent equals true um, when we, because the analysis and the are the entire data set. So we're gonna need uh, to keep this in there uh, for what we're gonna do later. So let's do um, beer boot, like so. And we'll let's set a seed on this so that this is reproducible. And then let's make these bootstraps. Beer boot. OK, so we've got a 1,000 rows here. Um, in splits, we have the um, information on what is in the um, what is in the um, analysis and assessment steps, but we're actually not, we're not using that. Um, so, well, maybe we are. Okay, let's, let's go on and see what we're doing here. Okay, so we made our, um, so this is about our bootstrap resamples, and this is the ID here for, of what we're doing here. So let's keep going. So we've got beer boot. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to, um, we want to fit a um, fit a uh, a model to all of these um, bootstrap 
uh, resamples here. So we're going to make a new column. You can just keep models in columns, in list columns, much like the, this list column contains a split object. Our new list column is just going to contain a model. So we're going to call, let's call it model, and we're going to use the per function map. And um, what we're going to map over, so when you use the function map, the first thing you say is what are you mapping over? And then the second thing is what are you mapping, um, what are you, um, what are you, uh, what is the function that you're applying to the thing you're mapping over? So let's, uh, so the thing we're mapping over is splits, and the thing we are, uh, go, the function that we're going to apply is uh, this function right here, lm, um, this, this whole shebang right here. So let's, um, uh, did I get, I think I got the right number of everything here. So we're going to fit the same thing here, but it's, it's instead of data equals um, the brewing materials, we're going to say data equals um, dot. Uh, I think that's what's right. So let's see, is that right? Yes. Um, uh, that went really fast. I think it's not data equals dot. Or maybe it is. Let's keep going. May, yeah, no, that, whoops, not there. Um, yeah, actually, I think that is right. So let's, so now we're going to, um, in here, we're going to make a new column. So there's the model. And now we're going to make a new column. Let's call it um, coefficients info, where we keep the coefficients. And we're going to map again. But this we're gonna, time we're going to map over the model. And the thing we're going to do is we're going to tidy those models so that we can get out this for each of the thousand new data sets that we made. So let's call this um, beer models, like so and run this. So what's happening is, instead of fitting the model one time, whoops, it did not, oh I, yeah, so there's the models. So instead of fitting the model one time to the actual original data set, what we're doing is we are um, fitting the model um, a thousand times on these thousand created data sets that are based on the original data set but are um, but are instead um, uh, created with this uh, this uh, 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 replacement a uh, drawing like random sampling with replacement and so for each of these a thousand data sets you know we have these these um, uh, these, uh, these these estimates for what how much sugar do you need for a, a barrel of malt? And so what this helps us do is um, this is much more robust to assumptions of what's going on in our data. And you by by you know creating these simulated data sets that are based on a real data set, we can get a uh, more robust estimate of what of the thing that we are interested in. All right, we uh, let me let's save this. We got to save this. Beer coefficients like so. So now we have the coefficients like this. And now we can now this is now data. Like our the output of our models is data. So let's uh let's start to evaluate what we think we have here. <clears throat> some of the great some of the really be great huge benefits of um uh, dealing with in the tidy models ecosystem, even if you're not, you know, um, training some really fancy predictive model, but instead doing something more inferential like this is um, is being able to treat your, you know, these data, um, uh, you treat the results of your models as data and be able to handle them in some nice ways. So let's start by. Um, you know, I'm just kind of interested in the in the distribution of those estimates. Like what, what before, you know, we got one value when we, um, when we trained at one time, but what do we get now when we, um, when we use resampling instead and, f and do it a whole bunch of times? All right, let me, um. Let me get a better look at this. Okay, so this is very helpful. So we can see how broad the distribution is, get a sense of that, get a sense of where the central part of it is. And so this, this set of data um, that is all of these fits can be used for, to help us understand how much 
Um, so what it like to get a, a sense of what is an estimate that we can give and then what is a sense of the very uh, the variability of that um, quantity that we're interested in and we can in fact um, get actually just you know get confidence intervals from this set of data here um, the way I'm gonna do that right now is called um, uh, you know, it's it's from the R sample package, and it's um, confidence intervals based on um, bootstraps, which is just what we did. And so, what we do is um, we give it the we give this function the um, uh, the models. I think. Yep. Uh, so this is why we did a parent set to true. Um, so we can give it the models, so beer models. And then um, the other thing that we have to give it to is where the statistics are. And that's here in um, uh, coefficient info. I think this is right, let's see. Yeah, okay, this worked. So what we have to give it is where did, the, where, what has the bootstrap resample? So remember beer models has that. Here it has the resamples, and then um, which of the column names has the um, has the info in it? Okay, so here we go. Here's our here is our um, here are our bootstrap confidence intervals. We have um, uh, an estimate and a lower and an upper right here, and so we can so here this is what we say. We say like how how. Um, uh, the, you know, this is the answer right here. How much, um, how much of a barrel of sugar does a um, uh, does do beer producers need for every barrel of malt that they use to make beer? And it's like it's like a you know a five to one. You know, uh, they need five barrels of malt for every one barrel of um, of sugar. So, and we have and we have the the uh, bootstrapped confidence intervals here on as well. Um, so this is really um, powerful uh, way to get robust r estimates of some uh, quantity that you're interested in. We also can see we can like visualize how different these are by going back to this this model's um, data frame that we have. And I don't uh, let's see so. Um, what we'll do is we'll we'll make a new column as well. So the tidy uh, broom has three verbs that are used a lot. Um, uh, tidy, a glance, which says just tell me stuff about the model, and then augment, which says go back to the original um, uh, uh, data points and add stuff to them. So let's let's use augment here. So we're going to say augmented equals map model augment. The nice thing about, well, I, I don't know, it's nice sometimes, not nice sometimes. LM, the model, actually contains, you know, all the data it was trained on. So if you just say, if you just augment a model, it'll give you the predictions from the model there. And so, uh, and then we can unnest here to get all those augmented, um, augmented things. A thousand might be too much. Um, because we're gonna, what we're trying to do here is make a visualization. Let's um, let's do 200 instead. So let's call this beer og, like so, and let's run this and see what results we get here. So um, so for every, so we have the IDs. We have the IDs here. The IDs are the bootstrap. Remember that the IDs are the bootstrap resamples. And then for every ID, we have all the training data that was in that, um, all the points that were used to fit that, um, that in, in that bootstrap resample. And so what we have here is um, what are the values? What are the values as we go here? And he here's the, for example, the real value. And here is the fitted value. Real fitted, real fitted. Um, and so on like that and so what we can do with this augmented data set is we can pipe it to ggplot and we're gonna put um just like we did up you know at you know when we looked at it here when we looked at this thing 
we're gonna we're gonna do this um, but instead of fitting a line instead of fitting a line we are going to um, put the lines from the um, from the fitted column so we're gonna say um, let, so we're gonna make a new AES here where X is the same but Y is equal to fitted instead of the real value and we are going to um, we want to make a whole bunch of lines that connect together so we have to tell ggplot which lines to connect together and you do that with the group argument and group is ID here so group is the um, the bootstrap resample, and let's. Uh, this is going to be a lot of lines, so let's say um, let's make these quite transparent, and let's. I don't know. Let's give these some kind of nice color. Um, in a turquoisey kind of mood right now. So let's see what we have here. Nice. Okay, let me make this bigger so we can look at it and uh, get a nice view of what it is that we're seeing. Okay, so the points are the real points from the um, that we got from the v the beer production data set, and then these these sets of lines are um, uh, when you do bootstrap resampling, when you draw with replacement from this data set, and then you fit a line to it. What kinds of different lines can you get? And this this uh, this set of two hundred lines um, shows you visually the um, uh, kind of where the lines can be, how different they can be in slope, and um, uh, how how much kind of variation we get uh, there? So this is a way to visualize. So we so we we visualize the distribution of the parameters. We've um, got our confidence interval out, and then we um, uh, we're able to in fact visualize what the fits look like. <clears throat> well, we did it. Um, we use um, bootstrap resampling to estimate how much sugar um, beer producers use um, to, relative to malt. And um, this one seems like it has the right amount, so that's good. And um, <clears throat> Uh, you can, we can use this approach when we have when we want to make a ro uh, a get robust estimates of the kind of quantities that we are interested in. So I um, hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoy anything you may be having, and I will see you next time.